Alrighty, welcome everyone. I am Blaze here. So we are going to be talking about charm kiting, how to do that as a bard here on Request TLP, but it's the same mechanics on Project 1999. Just a few changes because there's a few new songs that you get uh, come Luke. But let's talk about it. So let's look at the guide here. Let me zoom in. Bar Charm Kiting Guy, Luke Lanera. So the main two things that you'll need before really doing this, so the kind of the ideal situation, is you want to have enough mana regeneration to compensate for the loss via charming. So three main forms of mana regen that bards have available to them being you can use mod rods, you have your mental clarity AA line, come Lucan, and then flowing thought items or mana regen items. So mental clarity being this, let's go to Shats Lucan, and it's under archetype. Mental clarity, passive ability increases your mana regen by three points. This doesn't have a cap, I believe. Well, it does have the the AA you know, max rank, but um, you can have as much of this as it'll let you. And then when it comes to flowing thought items like Earring of the Solstice or Reign of Kazakh Thule, these you can only have a cap of 15 worn um, mana regen. So yeah, only 15 from uh, equipped items. So you can get 15 from that and it looks like till the end of the game there's 46 ranks of mental clarity so you can get a lot of mana regen as a bard eventually. But uh, ideally, you want to have enough mana regen to compensate for the loss from charming. So, I have a video I did recent, recently about uh, bard mana regeneration mechanics. And so, so, this level 39 song that lets you charm up to 51, it costs 60 mana per minute. It's the same on P99. Um, it costs 15 mana per 15 seconds or something to that effect it's it's a fourth the less time but it costs the same exact mana over a minute so the way this works so you need to regenerate 60 mana per minute in order to effectively permanently charm without having to worry about losing your mana without uh being drained essentially so the way you can figure that out is there are there's a tick on the server side every 10 seconds, so that means there's six ticks per minute. And that means uh, every single tick you get this uh, regen value back. So every single tick I'm getting, or every single 10 seconds, I'm getting 8 HP back. Uh, every single tick, every 10 seconds, I'm getting 6 mana back. So 6 times 10 ticks, as in a minute, that's 60 mana, so I'm getting 60 mana back every single minute. So that's good enough to compensate for the amount of loss from Charming. But I've noticed even at 5 mana regen, it seems to work too. Just a little less tolerances. But with, with 6, even if I have to break Charms early or um, you, I get uh, Resist early or whatever it might be, it's more than enough to compensate, especially with a little bit of downtime that there is between the poles and all that. It's more than enough good where I'm almost always full mana. So that's one thing you might want to consider, uh, the mana regeneration, but what's even uh, beyond that, I mean, you can do this strategy without that mana regeneration, you're just going to have downtime because your mana can't compensate for how fast you're burning it. <clears throat> and the other aspect, we're going to talk about instant invisibility item. So these, you can get by without this, just like without having max mana regeneration, but it makes it a lot more risky you're a lot more likely to lose out on uh, exp because you break charm too late or you might have to break charm earlier which means it's going to take you longer to finish off the mob it just makes it less efficient so the two best items from my understanding for breaking charm instantly for bards and enchanters are the goblin gazuki ring which this drops in kunark off the lake of ill omen I have two videos up on this for doing uh, for farming this item on P99 as well as farming it on uh, live on time lock progression servers. And there's another item that you can get called Boots of the Mosquito. I'm not sure what expansion this is available in. I think it's in Planes of Power, 
when they do a Kazakh Thule revamp. And Boots of the Mosquito, anybody can use it again. And it's an instant invisibility versus animal. Which looks pointless. Like, who, who wants that invisibility? But it's the only invisibility that Bards, at least from what I know, can use it instantly to break, um, to break a charm. Any invisibility seems to instantly break a charm. So... You want that, but if you don't have a Goblin Gazuki Ring or Boots of the Mosquito, and man, Necromancers and Shadow Knights are lucky to have Circlet of Shadows. Being that, that's a way better one, but if you don't have those, some other options you can kind of get by by using Hide, by using the Hide skill. The thing is, it has a, it, it's, it's really hit or miss. You're more likely to fail with it than not. And of course, you got Sila Song of Travel or, say, Shari's Sonorous Clouding. The only problem with these two is they take four seconds to cast, so you really need to time this stuff right. Um, it means that's four seconds of where you better hope your pet isn't dead before the song goes off or you just lost out on that EXP. So those are the two songs that you want to, you could use and compensate. But it's really nice about having these this instant invisibility ring is it saves up a spell slot. You can actually um, free up a spell slot where you don't have to load it with invis. You can load an extra dot or whatever it might be. And then one of the really nice songs that you get come Luklin is this. It's a Celos that goes just as fast as like the level 5 Celos. But the thing about this is it lasts for... 2 minutes and 30 seconds, so you don't have to refresh this all the time. You don't have to constantly keep it up in your twist. You can just see when it's coming down. Like I have my Gina trigger, you'll see right here. I got 2 minutes and 30 seconds to see low. So when I see that going low, just twist it back in and you're good to go. So let's... Is there anything else I want to mention? So what's really important when you do this is you want to pull by social aggro, mean kind of getting mobs and running them on top of each other so they kind of join in on the fight, or by proximity aggro, staying really close to a KOS mob and getting them to uh, aggro onto you by that. You don't want to do anything, though, that can make you go higher on the aggro table beyond that. Because what will happen is you'll pull the big swarm, and if you go a little bit higher on the aggro table, when you charm a mob... And uh, you send it after the swarm. The swarm won't all go after your pet. Some of them will continue chasing you. And that's because you're too high up on the aggro table. So what I notice is some of my macros, like this solo melody I had. I had it used, I had a, I had it where it would use my J boots. Yeah, slash use item journeyman boots. I'd have that in there. And the problem is that J boots actually boost you up on the aggro table as well as, as well as many other clickies. And it completely ruined like the 30 minute pulls I made. So you have to make sure you do not use clickies when you're doing this uh, beyond the instant visibility stuff. And it's honestly with this, it's a balance when you're doing charm kiting. You can pull a lot of mobs and you can also pull a few mobs. The thing about it is that if you get too many mobs, it means your pet's going to get beaten down very quick. But it also means there's less room for error. Because if you don't break that charm before the mob gets killed, you lost out on all that experience. And when you got 30 mobs beating down on one pet, that window of tolerance of breaking that charm is really quick. Is really quick. And oftentimes server lag will kill you on that. And then if you do too few mobs, if you pull too few... You have to refresh charm a couple times during it. It's going to be a lot slower. So it's a balance. And it, it, and eventually when the swarm starts to get beaten down, it starts to get slower and slower with the time to kill. So it's sort of this balance between the two. Finding a right spot with a number of mobs. And critical what mobs? Mobs not to pull. What mobs do you not want to pull? You do not want to pull summoners. And... Casters, ideally no, but especially ones that root or snare. Do not pull those. Yeah, they are a pain. So, let's uh, get into this, shall we? Okay. 
Okay, so I'm going to start my pull. I really like Maiden's Eye because it doesn't have a whole lot of casters and none of the mobs summon, as far as I know, and all the mobs are within that. Almost all the mobs are within the level 51 cap of my charm right now. So let's get pulling, shall we? So I've got to pull by proximity aggro. I think Zyvowies. It's the V's. It's the Zy with the V's that can cast, so just don't pull those. I only have one of those can be charmed. I might have to drop some of these off. Those don't cast. It's fine. Okay, let's work with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kite these around a little bit, kind of bunch them up. And I need to go to a spot of the zone where I don't have to worry about ads. Okay. Gonna charm one and send it after the swarm. Now I need to watch my pet. When my pet gets low on health, I need to target myself and click the instant viz. So I'm watching right here. When it gets down to about 10, I'm gonna drop. Thirty, twenty-eight, and break. Perfect. Sometimes you have to break a little early because of the lag. <laughs> and I got 220 on my silos. Okay, perfect. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to target them. this mob. That got damaged a bit, and I'm going to send it after the swarm. Perfect. I might have messed up. Perfect. If I use a J-boot spam, that might have wrecked the whole thing. We'll see. <laughs> hey, can I charm you? No, no. None of these I can charm. I can charm you. Yeah, I think I messed up. So, like I mentioned, do not use any of your clickies. As you'll notice, these guys just aren't going to leave me alone. They're going to keep chasing me because that stupid one J-Boost cast I did. So, I'm going to try to do this pull right. So this sucks. Imagine if you spent 30 minutes making a pull. You just basically screwed up your whole swarm. Let's finish them off. Bards also have some AoE songs, but they cost a lot of mana. I'll show it. Let me leech these guys, because I need to start over. After messing up like that. You just run far enough away, and they should drop aggro. Just make sure you don't run them on top of someone else, because it's that'll train them. 
so the AOE dot spells those <laughs> those uh, don't work anymore like they used to on P99 I'll show it let me just leash these guys first there we go So, these ones, like Chords of Cessation, Denon's Chord, Disruptive Dissonance. These AoE dot songs that you used to do AoE swarm kiting. These don't do any damage to mobs that are moving. So really the only way that you can solo is by using a single target dot. Like the two yens line. Or via charm kiting that's really all you can do to solo it as a bard effectively <laughs> but there is one aoe that bards get this denon's desperate dirge it costs 800 mana per cast and it only does five mobs but i've been able to get it to like 1300 damage at level 60 so it hits hard it hits hard so that's if you really need to burn something quick you can use that but if you don't have the mana regen to compensate, you know, you got to be really careful about that. Let's try another pull. Where I do things right. I don't want to pull the, the Vias because those cast. It's not like, I don't think they'll root, but I just don't want to have to constantly... And see, like right now, I'm pulling by proximity aggro. So I'm just getting close to him, but not, not actually doing anything that would damage them or casting any ability on them. I'm just trying to get close enough so they aggro onto me. I like these skeletal drudges. They're, they're pretty good. Perfect. Okay. Or a Vios, I do not want you. So what I want to do is kind of find a spot that a, has a little less traffic. Oh man, sometimes those traps are pain. <laughs> Maybe right here. Right here is good. Big thing is you don't want to get stunned. Because if you get stunned and the swarm catches up to you, you're dead. You're so dead. Okay. Let's take you. Send it after the bat. And I shouldn't any aggro so the swarm should attack my pet perfect get ready to charm break now Whew, that was close i almost lost out on that exp you can see how quick that if you get enough mobs your pet's almost dead instantly the next pet level 48 okay i can charm that let's send you after the vampire bat perfect get ready to charm break and now oh man i think i targeted the wrong mob I didn't, I didn't target myself, I targeted that, so I lost out on that EXP. Okay, I need to get this Vias out of here quick. 
send it over to the Ravenous Beast. The Vias is cast. I get myself. Get ready to break. Now. And you use tap to eventually target the pet that I want. Where are you? I'm trying to tap and I can't get a target on the Vias. There we go, finally. Okay, he's probably done. Yeah. Spectral Wolf. Let's take you. Send you after the Ravenous Beast. And all you gotta do is just pull the swarm right on top of your pet. Uh, F1, by the way, is a way you can quickly target yourself. And F1 twice will target your pet. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Let's take this drudge and send it after that bat. I'm, I'm really getting in the way of it chasing me. I don't think my pet can... There we go. And... Charm Break. And you can do this indefinitely. If you have enough mana regen, you can honestly do this indefinitely. <laughs> with the way here with all this pathing. But you're basically just running around in circles all day long. I need to charm that Vias. Trying to target it. And tap targeting. There we go. You are charmable. It's perfect. <laughs> oh, okay, I need to target myself. My pet's about to get killed. And break. Perfect. It looks crazy. It really does. <laughs> Stinks you can only charm up to 51 though. That's just a light blue con to 60. Hope you're keyboard and mouse don't glitch out that would suck I found though doing this method it's a little bit more tolerant to lag than if you were like AOE swarm kiting on P99 you really had to have lag on your side or that was not going to go well
These vampire bats go too fast. That's the problem. Did I spam a clicky? I think I spammed a clicky. Because these mobs aren't running off of me. Make sure you give enough room because, <laughs> boy, <laughs> if you get stunned, you're dead. You are dead. It's kind of fun, though. I really enjoy doing this. Oh, I had an instant charm break. Jeez Louise. Well, that's no fun. <laughs> Eat these bats. They just move way too fast. There we go, and pets starting to take damage. Let's get ready to break. Oh, it, it got killed. Dang. You're too high to charm. You're too high to charm. You are not high enough to charm. Bring a swarm on my pet. No, they are not backing off. Okay, so I think I've grabbed too much aggro. To the point where this isn't going to work anymore. Yeah, because they're not attacking my pet, they're attacking me, and they're not, even though I'm pulling them on the swarm. Wait, there we go. Did I lose or no? One percent, I got lucky. You are charmed. Just want to kill this bat and get it out of here. Okay, let's, let's go after you. Pull the swarm on top of my pet. Perfect. When your pet gets low health, it'll get proximity aggro. Oh, it got killed. Even with instant chart breaks, you can see how it uh, be a bit rough. Wow, they are killing that fast. So yeah, I'm gonna end this here. So thank you guys all for watching. See you later. You can see, though, definitely don't pull too much and don't pull too little.